Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We appreciate your time and effort for joining this webinar from so many time zones. Today's webinars will be around protecting your business in executions from core to edge. Um, behind it, you know, it's really focused on um, de developing a protected distributed archi hybrid architecture secured by Arca Trusted OS and running on AMD secure encrypted virtualizations. Companies, small or big, need to engage closer with their customers, partners, and a large, of, a large set of actors supporting their ecosystem. Technically, they need to interconnect with them to automate a number of processes and develop new business models. This opens tremendous opportunities, but also numerous threats. How to let the business explore those opportunities, meanwhile mitigating the related risk in a simple manner? This is today's focus uh, webinar. With me today, I'm very pleased and honored to have Jean-Claude Benard. He is Cloud Solution Sales Source and MEA from AMD. He will talk about the underlying technology that support the protection of the data in use, so-called confidential computing. Mathieu Legray, VP Product at SciSec, he will explain how the SciSec, um, SciSec leverage confidential computing to deliver a secured distributed architectures from the core to the edge. And myself, Luca Gabena, I'm VP Edge Computing at SciSec. So everybody knows uh, about AMD. It's a company that was founded in 1969. It's offered the industrial's broadest portfolio of leadership with high performance and adaptive processors technology, combining CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, um, adaptive SOC, and deep software expertise to enable leadership computing platform from cloud, edge, and end devices. AMD's unique business value relies on performance, total cost of ownership, low energy consumptions, and security. SciSec is a bit less known company. It was created four years ago. It is a European company based in Switzerland with a subsidiary in France. SciSec mission is to shorten the time to market of innovative, sensitive, and mission-critical business logic solutions. By facilitating the integrations into a trusted IT environment, company can protect their critical data at all times, everywhere from an on-premise cloud up to the edge. In today's webinar, the focus will be on the core to the edge and not the far edge. Uh, in, um, uh, in other words, the expansion of the IT domain toward the edge through a distributed architecture. In our next webinar, in, uh, and in some white papers that I will publish during the next couple of weeks, we will extend the dis discussions toward the so-called far edge and its interaction with the uh, operation technology uh, environment. But before moving forward, let's do some uh, um, uh, housekeeping. Uh, um, during the webinar, you will be able to add some questions. You see on the, on the um, uh, right side, you have a list of questions, uh, um, a list of written, written questions. You can add your question there. And at the end, during the Q&A sessions, we'll be able to answer uh, almost, uh, when the time uh, allow, uh, the question you will have during the, the, this webinar. So as uh, a first start, I forgot to present, you know, who is SciSec, I already uh, mentioned it, but okay, let's move uh, forward. It is, um, you know, when we talk about technology, it's always important why, why uh, the, the use of this technology. And it's always important to remember that business drivers are at the heart hurt of technology, uh, technology choice. In the past, it was a bit constrained. No, the options are so big that you know, uh, making the right, cho uh, right choice uh, is uh, very important for the business. The drive, uh, um, this drives the need of more complex distributed architectures. In his book, The Digital Transformation Playbook from David Rogers, I highly recommend, he um, listed five main driving force. You know, harnessing customer networks, build platform, not just product, turn data into assets, innovate by rapid experimentations, adapt the value proposition or the business models. All these elements since a while are well known, but it's important to remember that these are the drivers that require new type of technologies. 
And um, you know, one of the consequences is really that the te technologies allow to build a distributed architectures that allow companies to interconnect with customers, deliver continuously insightful real-time services in a cost-effective and efficient way. So uh, obviously, you know, it seems to be abstract. So I took you know four examples on a recent discussion with customers. Um, in order to illustrate, you know, the, this concept BI, uh, behind, you know, uh, distributed architectures. For the purpose of the webinar, we will simplify the cases and highlight only some of the attributes that are relevant for each uh, cases. The first one is uh, within the manufacturing environment, the typically industrial automation topic. Here, the idea is, you know, is really, you know, once you start to bring the shared knowledge consolidated over months, to build the typical AI ML models for predictive maintenance, quality controls, um, automations in specific aspects of the productions. Uh, once you have it, you want obviously to redistribute it throughout the multiple geographies where company has its own production plans. It has also um, it also has to continue to update the shared model because once you have it, you need also to continue to update in function to follow the business needs. Such an architecture has to fit with production performance as well but respecting the local autonomy and uh, obviously the protection of the secret source that has defined you know, these uh, um, automation uh, processes. Obviously, if you, someone copy it, uh, the risk is to completely lose the, uh, inter, in your, the intellectual property of the company. So this is an example you know, of distributed architectures within the uh, um, manufacturing world. Let's take another one in the uh, pharmaceut uh, pharmaceutical business. Um, here, the idea is a bit different, is that uh, is it really to put in comments, obviously, without losing control, because this is the hurt of the value of the company. Um, the huge know-how, for example, they build over decades around a specific illness and provide the opportunity for doctors to compare with patient data uh, um, uh, the, 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 this uh, enormous uh, knowledge base obviously to improve the diagnosis and uh, uh, finally to also to uh, define the best cure um, uh, to follow. But this one has to be built uh, in, a, uh, you know, in a very protected environment for the data privacy of the customers, in particular in some areas like Europe or United States, but it also has to respect, respect local uh, regulations. Again, a typical um, um, distributed architectures, you know, to benefit, you know, of the huge know-how uh, of uh, pharmaceutical company in this case. The third example is in in the uh, energy um, uh, sectors, in typically in the grid management. Um, you know, in the past, the energy players have to move, you know, from a have to manage, let's say, uh, uh, this uh, smart grid from a very centralized, predictable, and controllable models. But unfortunately, with the uh, uh, arrival of renewable energy, they are based on you know, meteorological, be uh, meteorological behaviors. Uh, the numerous uh, small providers that are injecting their own energy in the grid, things about you know, private users who have their, their own uh, solar panels on the roof, and also on the higher, um, much higher volatile demands of energy. Think about also the electric vehicles. You know, if you have parked or a park of electric vehicles, it creates a large demand of, um, 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 of um, um, energy in one specific spot. And therefore, you know, it shifts from, you know, very centralized to a decentralized, very volatile uh, uh, supply and demand models. And this can be done only when you deploy your model in a distributed way uh, or in, uh, in the different uh, locations when, let's say, things happen. The last uh, examples I want to uh, provide here is in the uh, banking, in the retail banking industries. Uh, you know that retail banking are facing strong competition from uh, you know, online banking. The, the only way to survive is that if they need to lift up their customer experience and provide more value-added uh, services into the retail branches. This means improving the customer needs, um, uh, uh, sorry, and, um, uh, in the customer identifications, and as well as uh, give the possibility for the, uh, the officer in front, uh, behind the, the desk to have a level of freedom 
for example, for credit uh, uh, allocations eventually. And again, this should um, give some uh, possibility for the bank to provide some uh, local, um, uh, let's say, computation based on models that have been, you know, uh, developed eventually uh, centrally. This is, let's say, four cases where, you know, we materialize, you know, some concrete distributed architectures. But obviously, you know, by having this, it uh, allowed to do much um, new type of uh, business. In, 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 and this is just uh, four small examples. There are much more, you know, we can list it. Obviously, here it's not, uh, you know, uh, straightforward. They are obvious uh, when building such architectures, it creates obviously, you know, uh, it opens new challenge and obviously uh, risk. Uh, and here I, I wanted to list some of the challenge we are observing when discussing with our customers. On the challenge side, you know, definitely the skill gaps. Uh, we talk about, you know, numerous technologies, but company cannot manage an infinite numbers of technology. It must be, you know, simplify enough to be integrated in their existing, uh, let's say, uh, IT um, um, workforce or a limited in, uh, effort in order to adapt it. It must be secure, scalable and reliable, agile to adapt to the new need of business and obviously protecting all the know-how that will be in, uh, in the, for example, uh, really distributed in areas that are far um, under the control of, you know, uh, the company. And obviously, it has to be able to manage uh, at scale. On the other side, there are also risks. Um, obviously, when you have such type of arch architectures, you simply increase the surface of attack and also the risk of data leak, not by, you know, um, mis um, um, bad behaviors, but by, you know, um, uh, wrong behavior, let's say, within the company. And obviously, uh, this may be extremely dangerous if we know, you know, all the um, inf uh, the, the fine and the, the, the pressures, you know, governments and regulators are putting under um, um, companies. Um, and maybe you've seen in recently, you know, significant, you know, fine that some kind of company got uh, by the not, not respecting the management of some data. And obviously, you know, the final point is the impact of the uh, on the reputations. Uh, when people know there are some leaks or issue with the, their data, they may be much more reluctant to collaborate uh, with uh, such a company. So. How to, to handle this challenge and mitigate this, uh, this risk? Obviously, you understood this is what in my, I, I said in my introduction, is with the focus of where uh, we want to point in this um, uh, webinar. So let's start with Jean-Claude Benard from AMD, who will focus on the underlying technology, the confidential computing that allows to build secured distributed architectures and obviously protect data in execution. But just before moving ahead, we just want to um, ask you uh, one question uh, to the uh, uh, entire audience. So um, please, uh, and we, okay, here are the, the questions. Uh, are you facing growing needs of protecting sensible data or mission critical uh, processes? Never heard about it, maybe. I hope it's not the case, otherwise you won't be here. Demand, uh, demand is coming from time to time from your customers or partners. It's getting serious because obviously, you know, uh, unfortunately, since the recent event uh, in the, um, from a ge geopolitical standpoint, this has increased, or you already have solution in place to mitigate uh, the, 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 uh, the risk and manage the challenge. So let's see the result. Okay. So I think you are in the right webinar. Yes, it's getting serious. Excellent. Uh, so Jean-Claude, up to you. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Luca and Mathieu, for this opportunity to introduce uh, confidential computing by AMD. Uh, you can ask yourself why in the world uh, is AMD talking about security, by the way. Um, so believe it or not, today all your data at the most critical uh, time of processing is exposed to the watch of all other processes that are working together. Uh, so either you are on premises or in the cloud, this is true. It's like um, you were washing your clothes in the public uh, laundry machine containing as well your neighbor laundry, eventually contaminated. Um, so the 
Today, we're using HTTPS to protect the, our queries. We're using encryption for data at rest. We're using encryption uh, uh, in your network. Uh, but nothing is available today to protect your data uh, at compute time without any specific uh, coding of your application, VM, or container. This is exactly uh, where AMD is filling the gap. You can switch to the next slide, please. And um, of course, we are addressing uh, all the needs for regulation and compliance. Uh, GDPR uh, imposed that if ever you have a breach of data, uh, you are supposed to report that within the two uh, within two hours. Otherwise, you you're fine, um, and uh, and so on. I mean, all the all the regulations impose that your data are safely uh, stored, safely um, managed, and safely computed. Uh, the fines are important. Uh, to what to what I, to, to my knowledge is. Uh, up to 20 million uh, euro uh, of fine if ever you call. Um, I think that approximately Marriott was recently fined for uh, for 23 million euro. So the the numbers are high and the risks are uh, also high. As Duca mentioned, I mean the the, the more we are in uh, in distributed architecture, the more we have a surface to to defend and uh, the more we expose. So the data sovereignty is also um, another topic that uh, we target uh, in the sense that uh, data sovereignty should uh, also cover uh, the, the encryption at compute time as well as uh, at rest and in transit. So if we switch to the next slide. In order to uh, comply with uh, regulations and the data sovereignty, uh, there is uh, three steps, there's three stage to uh, encrypt. One is uh, in at rest, when the data is stored in, uh, in your data, data warehouse or in your database. The second is uh, encrypt your data whenever it's, uh, it's in transit in your network. And the third uh, stage is the data in use, and it's exactly where we are um, where we are performing our encryption in memory and uh, in, in compute time. So uh, completing completing the three stage the completing uh, enabling in the three stage to have a, an end to end encryption complies with the, all the regulation that we mentioned uh, uh, earlier uh, with, the, with the GDPR and, uh, and, the, and, and the rest, and also complies with the needs for the company to have data sovereignty, company and country to have data sovereignty, and to, and to have the capability to, um, to, to be able to, to, to protect its data, wh whatever the stage at rest, in transit, or in use is. So how do we do that? Uh, and Matthew will, uh, will, 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 will go further uh, on that, technologically speaking. We do that uh, in, in, in handling your VM, your application, uh, your environment as is. There is no specific code needed to uh, protect your data in memory at compute time. No specific coding. I'm, I'm insisting in that. It's just lift and shift your your data into uh, in, into an environment where you have uh, enabled the option of confidential computing. It's not. It's nothing else than um, taking uh, an option, which is confidential computing. And uh, it's a, it's a simply uh, handling uh, the the encryption key for your VM ap application. It can go up to 500 uh, VM uh, in parallel, and uh, the performance is not affected uh, as much as we have uh, measured. It's to two to three percent performance uh, impact. 
So uh, basically, uh, what we are filling the, the we're filling the gap here is to be is to enable uh, data privacy, is to enable security, uh, uh, all all the way from on from uh, from at rest in transit and compute time. That's end my my presentation, Mathieu. Okay. No, uh, thanks, uh, Jean Claude. Uh, uh, obviously, just just to uh, re recall to everyone that you can ask some questions. Just please add in your leaflet, you know, where it's written questions um, uh, on your screen, so we can answer also more in details. But before, let's say moving to uh, Mathieu, uh, I think we have another uh, questions, maybe more to understanding of your view on confidential computing. So, are you planning to leverage confidential computing to better protect your digital activities? Um, yes. In my next project, I may consider it in the next six to 12 months. It is far too early for my organization. It does not cope with my today security challenge. So let's see the results. If, okay. Oh, here we have a more meet, uh, you know, distributed uh, um, answers. So in, interesting to see that say, there is a half that you know may consider it or will consider it in the next six months, and the other half that you know maybe is a bit too uh, too early at that uh, stage. Okay, excellent. Let's move to um, uh, the uh, Mathieu's part. Um, Mathieu, up to you. Thank you, Luca, for the transition. So me, I, I will uh, dive a little bit, let's say, in, into the techniques. Uh, that is behind the solution that we provide to secure um, distributed architecture. And I will start with uh, what I call a elementary block. So let's say uh, it's the execution environment that we propose, uh, that we have developed, uh, and that we, we will uh, deploy in each node of, of a cluster. So the name of uh, this product is called uh, Arca Trusted OS. And uh, basically, as you can see on, on the left, on the figure, uh, it's composed of different layers, one of them being the, uh, an OS that is specifically designed to run containers. The other layer is a Kubernetes orchestrator with some uh, security uh, settings. Uh, so we provide this kind of uh, platform to orchestrate uh, containers. We want this platform to be secure. There are two aspects of security that we consider. First, we want to this execution environment to be trusted. So this means that we enforce the authenticity and integrity check of uh, the OS, of the file system. Okay, and to do so, we exploit some trusted hardware elements that are, let's say, uh, uh, included in the hardware. Uh, such as U UEFI um, firmwares and TPM in order to, 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 to uh, let's say, to use them as a, as a trust anchor uh, for the start of our um, uh, trust of cha uh, chain of trust. The second aspect, security aspect that is important for us is protection of data and code. And as it has been mentioned already by Jean-Claude, there are different stages of uh, data and we want to protect, to provide a solution that protects data in all the stages, data while at rest, data in motion and data in use. In this case, of course, we, we exploit, we leverage uh, these uh, SEV features provided by AMD, uh, AMD EPIC uh, CPUs. Next slide, please. So now let's have a look to um, how we protect data at rest. In this case, we consider we have a system image. So this system image is composed of our OS, also with a Linux uh, kernel, Linux, Linux kernel, sorry, a file system. On the top of it, we have a Kubernetes orchestrator. And of course, there are applications, I mean, containers uh, deployed on this uh, orchestrator. So that's, that's a, a system image that is stored on a hard disk. And this image is by default encrypted. So when we boot the system, next slide, please, we <clears throat> exploit a, a, a trusted computing base to 
authenticate and to check uh, the integrity of the whole file system and of the Linux kernel. That's extremely important for us. And after checking uh, this integrity of the file system, next slide, please, then we will trigger the release of a key stored in a TPM. And this key will be used to decrypt uh, the data that is uh, stored on the hard disk. So let's say that we, as I mentioned, this this confidential this uh, encryption is implemented by default. So this means that we have enforced this kind of security policy. It's totally transparent uh, from the from the user perspective. I would say the user just have to uh, let's say. Uh, uh, put some um, an encryption key in the TPM and for a performance point of view because we want to provide security but we don't want to 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 lose a uh, performance aspects uh, we use hardware elements so to protect the key that's one thing but for the block cipher we exploit a block cipher that is uh, running directly on the CPU so that there is uh, no impact on the on the performance of, of the CPU. Next, next slide, please. Yes, so now that's the protection uh, of that I knew. So as mentioned previously by Jean-Claude, uh, we use AMD EPIC technology. So this uh, SEV feature, and this SEV feature will provide us with what is called a trusted execution environment. So it's an environment that is isolated from the rest of the CPU. So this means that the code and data running in this trusted execution environment or TEE is perfectly isolated from the rest of the code and data executed on the same CPU. Um, okay, and there is also encryption of the RAM memory. So the data and the code that is uh, stored in the RAM memory will be encrypted. By doing so, uh, we are sure that data and code are accessible only by authorized application. Authorized application means that we can, let's say, make this code and data inaccessible to third party hosting the CPU, for example. Can be a cloud service provider, can be also the host of a data center. As uh, Jean-Claude mentioned, we run standard uh, virtual machines. I mean, there is no need to, to do anything, let's say from the user uh, point of view, uh, all the modifications that have been made in the OS, so in our OS, or also if you're working in a cloud environment, uh, it's, 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 it has been performed by the, the cloud service provider in the hypervisor. So from the user perspective, it's totally transparent, this protection of data in use. Next slide, please. The, the last uh, aspect of protection that is important and that we recover is data in transit. So in this case, we consider a cluster of nodes, um, uh, including Archica Trusted OS, and all those nodes, they are connected through links that we want to protect. And in uh, Archica Trusted OS, we provide some curated components that come by default and that will um, let's say uh, established by default wire guards between all the nodes and between the applications also. So we make sure that uh, there is an enforcement of uh, security policy uh, related to the protection of the communication between the applications. Uh, of course, if I mean that's true when we consider the communication within uh, the cluster composed of Arca trusted um, OS elements, but if the end user wants to communicate with elements that are outside this cluster, uh, we provide them with uh, a crypto service API that allows uh, the end user to simply or the application to simply perform cryptographic functions to uh, secure communication towards an element that is not within this ARCA cluster. Uh, this cryptographic service API uh, in, um, includes also a key management system that allows the, the end user to bring their own key and to manage their own key 
within the cluster. Uh, and last but not least, this crypto service uh, API can be used for, let's say, business purposes. Like, for example, if uh, your business is based on digital asset management, you might need to get access to cryptographic functions. Uh, and, and this is what you can do uh, or what we allow you to do with our cryptographic services API. Next slide, please. And so <clears throat> thanks to this, let's say, um, to Arca Trusted OS and to the fact that we can interconnect several nodes uh, based on Arca Trusted OS, uh, we can offer to end users a distributed architecture that is, uh, in fact, based on a continuum of confidential computing in the sense that the data and the code will be protected everywhere in the CPU, in the hard disk, so or, or when it's stored in a database, or when it's transferred between one node and another node. Uh, our technology is based on a container technology and um, container orchestration. So this means that we get the benefits from, from this kind of technology. So we get the agility coming from containers, scalability and reliability. Uh, we can operate, thanks to Kubernetes, we can operate um, a cluster at scale easily. And something that is important is that our Arca Trusted OS can be deployed in various environment, the cloud, on-premise, or even in the edge. So this means that uh, our platform is environment agnostic. From a security point of view now, I, I showed you that we get protection of data by design in all the stages. There is no need for recoding. So you have your existing, uh, you have your existing containers, uh, so application that are that are in the format of containers. You don't need to modify them to, uh, to, 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 to deploy them on Arca Trusted OS. And we believe that thanks to uh, the protection of data in use, it will be possible to generate some new third-party interaction. Of course, for example, if uh, you want to, uh, to, to, to deploy your application in an environment that you don't control, so you are not the host of this environment, such as cloud environment or also co-located uh, data centers. With this uh, additional uh, layer of, of protection, uh, you don't need to trust uh, the, the, the host of your environment. So that's the end of my part. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Let's move to the uh, Q&A sessions. So I can, we can stop sharing. I think there are some questions uh, I see there. I have uh, Said who is asking, I think this is more maybe for um, um, Mathieu. What are the infrastructure prerequisites to deploy an Arca trusted OS or and such type of architectures? Could you maybe describe a little bit on this? Uh, yes, so so uh, today we are talking about Arca Trusted OS uh, running on uh, x86 ar architecture, so AMD, uh, Apex. So the, let's say it's possible to run uh, or to deploy this kind of uh, OS on a server with AMD Epic or, uh, CPU. That's uh, that's obvious. This server can be deployed in the data center, on premise, or in the in the edge. And concerning uh, cloud environments, so far, uh, only two cloud service provider have offers with have offering, sorry, of um, confidential VMs uh, running on AMD uh, Epic uh, CPUs, one which is a Google Cloud Platform, and, and Arca Trusted OS can be deployed on a Google Cloud Platform. Uh, and Azure, so Azure uh, have released an offer very recently. We are not compatible yet, but we are working on this, and we, we should be uh, compatible with Azure uh, within the, I mean, before the end of, of this year. Okay, thanks, Mathieu. Um, now that I have another question. I think probably this is more for um, uh, Jean Claude. Um, who supports AMD's compute time encryptions? Compute time encryptions, as Mathieu said, uh, just mentioned, uh, we 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 rely on 
Google and Microsoft for for their uh, for the use of uh, for their um, ability to provide this service. But we have also uh, other cloud service providers like OVH, uh, Scaleway, that uh, Scaleway as well, that offers uh, the same service. And indeed, uh, you, you, every every and any uh, server uh, holding uh, an Epic uh, processor is able to uh, provide this kind of. Uh, I mean, is able to to provide encryption at compute time. Okay, I think there's Mathieu, another any, question. Yeah, sorry. Mathieu, any 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 add-on to that? Uh, no, no, no. I guess you you summarize very well. I think there's also a question from Loic. I mean, uh, obviously there are other, let's say, confidential computing uh, uh, technologies and some of your competitors. Tell me how you distinguish uh, yourself, you know, from the others uh, in MD. Yeah, the, 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 the main uh, difference between uh, GSX and the uh, Intel uh, uh, offering of confidential computing and us is that uh, Intel requires a uh, a specific uh, coding of your environment. Uh, I think we, we lost you. Could you repeat? <laughs> uh, they are uh, able to uh, perform encryption where, where you pointed in your code. Uh, say? No, I think we, we lost you in you know, a couple of seconds. So could you repeat your, uh, your response? Thank you. Okay, uh, just just, just to the difference between uh, us and GSX. Do you hear us? Do you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, the difference. Okay, that we, we, we don't require any coding. We don't require any specification uh, on your VM, uh, on your containers, on your. Uh, um, we we take your environment as is and. Uh, in the reach of uh, an option, we, we, we encrypt in memory and compute time all your environment. There is no requirement for coding or, uh, or anything else. OK, thanks. I think there is another question from uh, Helmut. Um, what are the differences between your container platform deployed in the cloud and the CSP container platform? I think maybe this is for Mathieu. Okay, um, so so um, it's true that it's uh, so so if we consider, for example, a Google uh, Cloud Platform, uh, they have offerings of confidential VMs. So this means that uh, they, they they propose you to run uh, a virtual machine that is running in one of those uh, trusted execution environment provided by AMD uh, SEV feature. And in this case, uh, you can you can uh, deploy there um, in Google technology in terms of um, container orchestration. So they have their own technology uh, in terms of Kubernetes. They call it a Google uh, Kubernetes engine. And in this case, they, they they provide you a kind of bundle. So you have the the, the confidential VM plus their own OS and their own orchestrator. Uh, in this case, let's say from a security point of view, uh, there is this uh, th potential threat that uh, someone, let's say, uh, with that has, can have access to a to a, a CSP. So in this case, to, to a Google uh, admin token, uh, can potentially access to your data it's it's feasible so they have let's say some kind of legal contract with the, the end user and it's they, they might be the the some cases where some end users cannot accept this kind of security so just a security based on a contract so our uh, threat model is different. What we want to propose the, to the end user is to use the, the cloud and uh, the, the Google environment or CSP environment to use the confidential VM provided by the CSP. But then we want to make sure that uh, only the, the, the people with the admin token uh, of the OS 
and of the of the the, the, the Kubernetes um, orchestrator from Arca will get access to the data. Uh, so 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 the threat model is different between the one let's say chosen by the CSP and the one that we choose. And we think that we we could bring more people to the this cloud environment because we think that that somehow we can create a, a bit more. Um, uh, we can address uh, people that might be, re um, for the moment, hesitating, let's say, to join uh, or to, to migrate to the cloud. Okay, I think there, uh, there is a question also from Sarah, who was asking, I mean, why not relying simply only on, uh, you know, on, uh, on the confidential computing services from a CSP? Uh, maybe, you know, it was a bit, you answering as well, Mathieu, I will say also, you know, imagine also in these distributed architectures, not everything run on the CSP. There are also elements that have to run, you know, beyond the, you know, the traditional data centers in an other environment, in another uh, subsidiaries, or eventually in a third party subsidiary. Think about, for example, um, 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 uh, process automations. Uh, the example I give in the first example I gave, you know, some actors are delivering on behalf of a cost, uh, of an industrial players some automations capabilities okay and obviously this is a huge uh, you know value from the or a huge asset they don't want to be you know copied and uh, lose completely the value so they want to protect it and typically this is usually happening you know uh, on premise not uh, uh, in the cloud and obviously uh, and the other point you know what Matthew mentioned you know some element maybe not really trust trusting completely let's say the the CSP then we have a, a question from um, Mar uh, Marco, who is the local, this is for Mathieu, uh, who is the local distribution of system and resource um, like BM work at the high level and who is this distribution is segregated at the operating system, uh, system level um, and security functions? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, could you repeat the question? Yeah. Please? How the local distribution of system and resource works at the high level, and how this distribution is segregated at the operating system level and security function. Okay. Okay. So so so. Yeah. Go, go, go. I'm sorry. I, I will not be able to. Uh, I don't think I have the capacity to answer this question. Okay. Okay. So maybe we will take it uh, in a, in a, in a offline, and uh, I will ping because yeah. probably this is. A, I guess it would be better to have to have a, a, an engineer. An engineer, you have to detail because then we go in in the in the uh, deep uh, thing. Maybe a, a last question. I see it's from. Um, who is it? Sorry. Okay, Alexandra. Um, uh, we have okay. What about you know uh, working with VMware? Maybe this is maybe for for you, Jean Claude. I mean, how it's working AMD with uh, VMware? Uh, AMD is working. Do you hear me? Uh, yeah, AMD is working uh, closely with VMware um, so much that uh, their environment, by by uh, in standard, is uh, commercial computing enabled. So there is no. Uh, I mean, there is. Uh, a complete uh, transparency between uh, our solution and uh, and VMware, thanks to the common work we we did together. Okay, thanks. So uh, I just see now we are reaching the the time slot we agreed for this uh, webinar. So uh, for Marco, we will try to answer you uh, offline uh, for more details. Uh, but thanks for joining this webinar. Uh, keep it uh, tuned because the next one, as I said, will be uh, focused on the so-called far edge, the integration or the working within the operation technology uh, environment. And uh, there will be also a, a, um, a suite of uh, white paper we also delivered uh, in the coming uh, weeks. So thanks for joining. And uh, do not hesitate to contact us uh, for more information, for deep dive. We'll be more than happy to, uh, to follow uh, up with you uh, on uh, concrete opportunities. Thank you very much. Bye. And uh, thanks also for Mathieu and Jean-Claude for your participations. And um, wish you a nice uh, rest of the day. Cheers. Bye-bye.